You're welcome to my channel, Mindset Academy, where we want to analyze this problem in technical drawing. And that question goes like this. It says, a point P is 16 millimeter inside a 76 millimeter diameter circle. If the circle rolls for one revolution along a fixed horizontal line, draw the locus of P, P is to start in its highest position. Now, first of all, let us draw the fixed horizontal line on which the circle is rotating, right? It's rolling. So let's say this is my fixed horizontal line, right? Now, on that line, I will draw a vertical line on it this way. Place my C square on that point, and I'll draw a vertical line there this way. You can see that. And um, we are told that the diameter of the circle, the bigger diameter there of the circle that is rolling, is 76 millimeter. So we say we were measuring what 38 millimeter, right? For to be the radius. So I'll just take my meter rule and I'm going to measure 38. So from zero here, this is 30 and this is 38 here. Right? And I'll place it at this point here. Right? I'll place it here and I'm going to mark. So that point I mark will be the center of the circle. So I'll take my compass to that center with the same radius right and i'm going to draw a circle which i am going to take in which i'm going to what take in so this is what we have here that is the circle that is rotating. Now, we are not told that this circle that is rotating, there is another circle, right, inside the circle that is rotating. Is that the key? There is what? Another circle rotating inside the circle. And that circle has a 16 millimeter inside the circle, right? Because the circle that is rotating is at a distance of 16 millimeter inside the bigger circle, we we'll call it an inferior trochoid. Assuming we are told it is outside the circle, maybe 16 millimeter outside the circle, to be what? A superior trochoid. So let us measure 16 millimeter to inside the circle. So if I take my meter rule, right, and I should measure 16 millimeter on my meter rule this way from zero this is 10 and this is 15 16 here right i am going to place it at this point here and i'm going to mark you can see that where i mark i will not with this i will not take my compass place it on the center of the circle with the radius at that point right with the radius at that point here then i'll not draw a circle which i'm going to take in you can see that so this circle i have drawn i will divide the highest point of this circle is at this point here let's call it to the word p is that again? I'll call it to be what? P. And I'm going to divide this circle into 12. So the first one is, I'm going to take my T square and I'm going to move it. Right? I'm going to move it to that center point. I'll draw an horizontal line this way. I'm dividing it. And in doing that, 
I will now take my compass with the same radius of the circle, right? Or better still, I can use my C square. I can use my C square and divide it. So if I place my C square on my T square this way, my C square, my T square this way, I will divide it, right? So place it this way when it's standing like this. I'll have this faint line. I'll turn it the other way around too. I'm going to have this too. Faint line. I'll sit it down this way. I'll divide it this way too. Faint line. I'll turn this this way. I'll divide this too. Faint line. You can see that? So if I've done it that way, it means that this is my P. Here will be P1. Here will be P2. And P11. Is that okay? So what I'll do next is I'm going to draw an horizontal line here that the circle is rotating in this way, faint line, and I will take the distance of each of this division here. You can see that, and I'll place it from the first point here. I'll mark. So from here we have in point one. Two eleven twelve. I did into what twelve division because I divided it into twelve and I'll divide that into twelve too. So we start. So if I'm doing that, I'm going to take my C square and I'll move it to the highest point here, P, and I'm going to draw another line this way, right. So in doing that, I'm going to take my rule, place it on my T square, my C square, my T square, and I'll start joining each of these points upward. Right? I'll join this to the next one. Here and here. Can see that? So move that center line here. You touch here, just the way you are constructing your cycloid. If you've not seen a cycloid, you can click this link here in order to understand how a cycloid is being what constructed. Now. This point here, I'll call it my C0, center 0. Here will become center 1. Here will become, it will be, at this point, will be center 2. 11 and 12, by the center, right? While this line you're seeing, this will be the line of 12, right? The line of 11, the line of 10, 3, 2, 1, then we have what? 0. So, what I'm going to do is the circle is rolling along this path, right? If you move to point 1, it will intersect with line 1. So, let's see that. Let's see what will happen here. Let's see, let me zoom it up. This way. Right? Let's see, take it up more. So we we'll have let's move forward. Now if you look at this closely, 
if I take my circle, this is the radius of my circle from the center here to P is the radius of the circle, right? If I come to C1, means the circle has rotated to a new position. That is C1, I'll draw my circle. Faint line. You can see that with the same radius. See, I'm not adjusting that. Now, that is circle 1. Then I'm going to move to, because we say it's moving in this direction, it's going in a clockwise manner, like this. Right? So I'll go to 1 here. This is P1. Go by 2 P's in the highest position. And I'm going to draw a line this way. So where the line 1 I drew, right? Where the line 1 intersects circle 1 to be at this point. You can see that? That will be my point 1. Now one thing you need to understand about this is, this is the center point, 6 point. The, sixth, the center of the division, right? That is point 6. So if I'm coming from here, where I will be, where I will be intersecting my line will be at the left hand side of the circle. You see now, this is a circle, it's touching here and here. I ignored here because it's at the left hand side, so I'm focusing on the left hand side of the circle. Is that taking coin divide the circle into two? Is the left hand side. And since I am still below six, whatever we're intersecting will be at the left hand side. Is that taking now? So that I move at one. Now the next thing I'll go to the circle rotate again to the next position two. I'll come at center two, which is at this point here. And I'll draw another circle this way, right? And I'll move my circle to point two since I have the circle two. Then I'll draw a line from this point. You can see now this is a circle here. I'll focus on the left hand side. So where the circle two touch line two. This is line circle 2, touch line 2 here. This is my line 2, my point 2. You can see that? Now, I'll go to the next one again. I'll draw another circle. The circle will rotate again to another new point. Point 3, so I'll go to center 3, C3. I'm going to draw another circle. Right? In this manner. Right, so if I do that, I'll move to the three of fortunate enough. This is my line three, so where line three touch circle three will be at this point. You can see that I'll go again, I could rotate to point four. This is four. I'm going to move the circle at point four. So I'll draw line 4. This is the point of 4. I'm going to draw a straight line this way. So where circle 4 touch line 4. This circle 4. Remember, I'm focusing on the left hand side of the circle. Now I'll move to the circle, rotate again to line 5 to point 5. So I need center 5 to draw the circle. And I'll do the same thing here. So I'm going to draw line 5. This is what we have here. Put it this way. And draw the line of 5. So line of 5, this is the circle 5 here. It's touching the line of 5 here. Alright. I'll come to 6. the next circle 6 at this point fortunate enough this is the line of 6 so where circle 6 touch line of 6 which is the lowest point of the circle right that is the lowest point of what of the circle now in doing that um 
Now, since I've reached lowest point, whatever I'll be intersecting now will be at the right hand side of the circle. What that means is when the circle rotates to 0.7, go to center 7, and I'll have this. Now, I will not, I will not, um, it, it, I will not use the left hand side of the circle anymore. I'll not be focusing on the right hand side because I have passed the midpoint, which is six. So this is seven here, because the line of seven, if you trace it, seven here and five are on the same line. That is why I'm having 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 on the same line. But now I'll be focusing on the what? On the right hand side of the circle. Now it rotates to what? 2.8 right or draw another circle draw another circle here and focusing on the right hand side this is the line of 8 it's meeting at this point right and um, to rotate to 9 come to 9 I'll draw circle 9 I'm using the same radius So at point nine, it's meeting this is line line of nine, nine and three on the same point. And it's meeting at this point here. Then the next one will be at ten. At this point ten, I'll do the same thing. Right? So this is a line of ten and two on the same point. This ten, I'll move there. The thing here at this point, then the next one at 11 rotates to point 11. I'm going to do the same thing, draw a circle this way. This is meeting at point 11, so this is where they intersect at this point, right? The line of 11 mid circle 11 then the last but not the least it rotates to 12 I'll do the same thing draw a circle at point 12 they are meeting at this point here right the line of 12 is the highest point here which is also point P so if I rotate it here this is where they meet now I will now use my French curve to connect these three circles together, all good. So, so with the help of my French curve, I'll connect those points. So I can start from here. This is one of the points here. Take three at a time, right? So let's take three at a time. You see that? You can take another three at a time, right? Then I'll take another three at a time. Then take this three two. Then this. Then this. Just solve this this way. So, this is what we call an inferior trochoid. Reason is because this is um, constructed inside the circle. But when it's done outside the circle, it is called a superior trochoid. And we use the concept of what? Of cycloid to what? Construct this. If you have not gotten to that video, you can just click on the link at the top right corner here in order to access the video on cycloid. So, we we'll call this one complete revolution. Right? Undergo one complete circle, meaning start from P from 0 to what to 12. So, if you have um, found this video helpful, 
please don't forget to subscribe like comment and share the video thanks for watching